When 15 New Mexico organizations were accused of Medicaid fraud last year, the result was a huge shakeup in the state's behavioral health system. So far, the fallout seems to have had little traction in the gubernatorial election, but a political action committee has pushed the issue into the spotlight with a half-hour-long video that aired on KOAT on Sunday past. It was produced by Concerned Hispanics Involved in Legislative Empowerment, PAC, or Chili PAC. It was promoted as a documentary. It featured powerful stories from families who say the takeover of providers by Arizona firms resulted in them losing services. But, but, because it was aired as a paid advertisement, Governor Martinez's campaign has filed an ethics complaint against the PAC, alleging that it failed to register as a political action committee with the Secretary of State's office. Now, Sophie, this wasn't a documentary in the strictest journalistic sense. Sure. But when something, you know, we all know this thing we're facing, these cameras and TV, it, it, people don't make that distinction when they're sitting at home. No, and I'll tell you, I saw it all over Facebook. So it's right. not just the broadcast on TV. That's it was right. all over Facebook. It was being passed around like crazy. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't, I didn't think there was this concern about is this a true documentary or not because the stories by the, of the family members mm -hmm. were extremely powerful. And the presence of legislators, I think, also uh, made it quite powerful. The fact that right. there, we saw... Um, uh, legislators they are talking about the situation admittedly democratic legislators sure. but I think that it was a much more powerful vehicle than perhaps the governor is is recognizing mm -hmm. to say well you're not a registered PAC in the state of New Mexico that is a little bit in, insider baseball I, I'm not sure that that matters mm -hmm. to the average voter who's looking at this uh, this piece and saying that really, you know, reinforces what I think of the situation mm -hmm. and is really upsetting. Mm -hmm. Lieutenant Governor, would you make that distinction as well? Was there something about it that gave you any kind of angst when you watched it? Or uh, was it was it fine you know, as it was, as they say? Uh, you know, I watched it like I think many people did. It was a really windy Sunday afternoon. Yeah. I was in my kitchen, you know, I watched it and paid mm -hmm. pretty close attention. I did think it was powerful. Mm -hmm. Let me just say, it wasn't just the president of legislatures, but Senator Mary Kay Papin, mm -hmm. who is the pro tem of the Senate, who has spent her life's work in the legislature on the mental health issue, sure. who is not normally a person to come forward and do this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I thought that that, in my mind, made this very powerful. She has a schizophrenic grandson. Mm -hmm. She has worked forever. She knows the effect of not of going without services. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was pretty powerful. In terms of the PAC, you know, it didn't advocate for a candidate. It okay. talked about behavioral health services. Mm -hmm. Whether it fits the guidelines of a of a uh, political pack is really in question. Whether the complaints filed or not, so I do think that's more of an insider. You know, people don't really care about that when sure. it comes down to an issue that's affecting sure. their family. They yeah. don't care who's telling the story. Absolutely, Tom. You know, uh, let's get into the the issue of the documentary itself. Was it effective as a vehicle? Sophie mentioned some very powerful personal stories that we haven't heard from those types of folks before on this issue. Yeah. Did that work? Uh, I think it, it was very effective. Yeah. And you know, the production quality was high. Yeah. Uh, you know, the interviews were very compelling. The stories were very compelling. Mm -hmm. uh, that's about as far as I can go. Uh, I don't think it was a loose uh, documentary. It wasn't even a documentary. It sure. was just one particular perspective mm -hmm. of a particular issue. And so, uh, you know, I, that bothers me a little bit. It's, oh, it's a documentary. No, it's not a documentary. It's just a, it's a perspective. Right. And I think that they were very effective at sharing a particular perspective, mm -hmm. uh, but I think it reinforces the overall um, you know, void of information that all of us are dealing with. Mm -hmm. When you have that many New Mexico companies, that many Forget about the companies. We have that many livelihoods that are impacted right. by just one decision and one decision maker. Um, you know, this is just, I, I want this to be on, you know, out on the sure. table for everybody to sure. look at. Say, let's really dig into what these allegations are. Right. Let's stop worrying about these, you know, uh, confidentiality agreements and settlements and, mm -hmm. you know, extortion-like plays. Mm -hmm. Let's just get it out there into the public as far as what's going on. And, uh, 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 perspectives that are provided by this program uh, help to, you know, shed some light, sure. uh, perhaps on, you know, the impacts that we're seeing. I mean, a lot of the information that I gleaned from it and from the others that were talking in the document, I didn't know anything about the 80-some layoffs, Rob, at that one company. And you start to get a sense of the ripple effect of the, like a drop in a pond, all the things that radiate out when the decision's made. Yeah. It, did, did it get across the fact that this has become, this is bigger than anyone could perhaps 
have gleaned from the outside if you didn't, if you weren't a customer of behavioral health services? I think so, but on the other hand, like mm -hmm. as Tom alluded to, I mean, the fact that there was no one there from the Department of uh, Human Services okay. uh, to at least rebut or at least put a, you know, a fig leaf argument sure. uh, there, I think, really made you cast some doubts. Let me and ask you, are you are they, were they obligated to do that? No, I know, no. I know where you're coming from. No, we're all no. coming from at this table no, but I'm thinking, but journalists. But even if you're yeah. looking at it purely from, uh -huh. you know, from, 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 from one point of view and you, you want to drive home that point, sure. I think you can, la you can lend yourself a little bit more credibility to your argument if right. you say, here's what the Human Services Department mm. says, they, okay. says they can do. And another thing that mm -hmm. a lot of times gets, gets lost in this, and I wrote a story about this about a year, a little more than a year ago after I was talking to someone in Gary King's office, mm -hmm. one of his main deputies there, uh, is that under the new Affordable Care Act, mm -hmm. um, any state that has credible allegations of fraud, it's under the new rules of the ACA, it is up to the state agency to determine what credible, al credible allegations of fraud are. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty big hole sure. for, the, uh, for the Human Services Department to drive that bus through. Right, exactly. Well, that, that brings us to the point of some follow-up stories that have just occurred about um, the agency. Even the auditor said that one of the behavioral health services had some evidence to refute right. what they were saying. Mm -hmm. And it was the HSD secretary that said, no, 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 we're not going to accept that. Mm -hmm. Which goes to Tom's point about it is so important to get all the information out there mm -hmm. to really make, you know, to inform the public about what's happening. Mm -hmm. But meanwhile, real lives are being affected. And I thought that was the real impact of the documentary right. is mm -hmm. people going without services when they have to change uh, therapist, right. they go into a kind of a cocoon, as one of the right. people pointed out. I it's what very that term hard was, to do right? that. When people, they lose a certain percentage of folks with a changeover, Sophie, it was mm. difficult to hear that. You know, Nutrition your mind started started racing that. about 10, 20 people suddenly lost to the, you know. That's right, that's right. And this is a, this is a sort of by definition a vulnerable population right. um, that, that uh, in many cases need the stability that comes from having a single that's right a single caretaker um, I think we in addition to what Diane Dennis has already said mm -hmm. we heard in the past week uh, from Presbyterian saying you know we were forced to pay over mm -hmm. four million dollars and we still believe that that was a, an improper payment they forced us to make it sounded unfortunately like extortion uh, from the outside and I think um, that that raises new questions to have this piece come out at the same time that that uh, that Presbyterian is finally speaking, mm -hmm. um, it's a lot for HSC well, the, to do. I'm glad you both the, brought the that up. Order, yeah. The gag yes. order went the gag, away. That's right. yeah. And that's, that's right. why all of this stuff is all of a sudden, there was a one-year gag order, and that's it's right. gone now. There, there you go. Coming up, we go on the clock.